Hello, Blake Rudis here with F64 Academy and F64 Elite, and today I'm going to show you how to use Content Aware in Photoshop to fix composition. Happens all the time. We show up on scene, we have this idea in our head of what we want, we take the shot, and uh, maybe we take several shots. We get home, and it turns out we didn't take any of the shots that we needed. <laughs> it's happened to me several times. Here in Photoshop, we can actually use Content Aware Fill and the magic that happens, the voodoo that happens with Content Aware Fill to fix a poor composition. Let's jump into Photoshop and I'll show you exactly how to do this. So I was recently doing a critique session on F64 Elite and this came up. I saw a composition that I knew could be phenomenal if the subject was just moved over to the right in camera. Now, after you get home and you upload your images, you can't quite go back to that same location. What if you're on vacation, you took some of these amazing shots and you just can't go back there and do it? Well, Photoshop has this thing called Content Aware Fill. And the way Content Aware Fill works is it's actually like, um, it, it looks at your image and it sees what data is there and then it replicates it and almost flips it and rotates it and fills in blanks. Typically we see this in tools like the patch tool and the clone stamp tool, but you can actually fill in a whole section of an image in Photoshop. So here's the photo that we're looking at. And as you can see, I want this road to be more over here to the right. So if I were to press C for my crop tool and then look at where I would want my rule of thirds to essentially be. The way I'm going to do this here is I'm going to press command or control R and this is going to give me basically a ruler mark as to where I want that tree to be. So if I press C again for the crop tool, uh, I can grab that ruler over there and move that over just a little bit more. So we'll move it over to the right just a little bit more. And then that will be my composition that I'm going to build essentially for this rule of thirds. So what we would need to do here is if, if your image was a background layer. So if we went to flatten image and you came in as a background layer, what you need to do is just click this little lock that's down here in the lower right hand corner of your uh, layer. Just undo that. And then you can press V for the move tool and grab this layer and just move this over. So we can move that tree right on over to about there. And that would be the composition that we want. Now, if we look at this composition, all the stuff that's over here, it's just kind of excess. It's not really necessary for the, uh, the viewing pleasure of the image. Actually, it's very left weighted, meaning there's a lot of good stuff over here. And this stuff is kind of boring. So let's move this over and fix the composition. I'm using the rule of thirds for this, but I know how people feel about the rule of thirds. I mean, you know, it's one of those things. It's a rule. You know, we don't have to necessarily always use that rule when we're making compositions, but you can see for this image, it's going to make it better. So what I'm going to do at this point is press M for my marquee tool. And if you don't have the marquee tool with M selected, just come up here and you see the little uh, racing ant looking box. We're just going to grab on the outside of this image to about right here. I typically like to select a little bit more than what it is that I need to fill in. So I'll just go a little bit over the edge, by like a millimeter over the edge or an eighth of an inch, whatever that is, a sixteenth of an inch. And from here, we're going to go to edit and then go to fill. OK, you can also press shift and F5 to go to fill as well. And then under contents, you see foreground, you see background right here. You see content aware. OK, so this becomes content aware fill. Our options for color adaptation, I usually keep that checked. Blending, I don't really do anything with the blending at this point. I just go ahead and press OK. Now we get to watch Photoshop do its wizardry with uh, the data that it finds in the image. As I said before, it kind of takes what it sees on the other side of that box of selection that we have, and it flips and it rotates it a little bit. And that's why you can see that we actually have a continuation of this road, just like it should be. It's almost perfect. Press Command or Control H to get rid of the guide. Now, if we look at this, the thing that's a problem here is you see a lot of repeated patterns. That's Photoshop saying, hey, I did the best that I could, but man, there's a lot of stuff and there's a lot of data here and I couldn't quite fill this in with what you wanted me to fill it in with. And that's okay. That's where we just have to get pretty clever with the clone stamp tool and we can fix this up. So I'm going to make a new layer right here. I'm going to go over to the clone stamp tool. Now the clone stamp tool is a very interesting tool. It's going to take on whatever brush you tell it to take on. So I want it to just be a soft brush brush like this with a hardness that's about maybe 20%. And what that'll do is it'll be feathered on the edges, but it won't be one big feathered brush. Okay, so that's about good right there. The thing with the clone stamp tool is it needs a selection from somewhere on the image in order to work. So I'm going to press alt or option and then I can click over here and that see that little targeted little arrow there. I'm trying to point to it with my fingers. If you can see my screen, that targeted little arrow there, if I alt and click over there, that means that it's going to select from here and then I can paint over here with that selection of dirt over there. 
Now, the reason why I'm using that selection of dirt over there is because it's on the other side of the canvas. And kind of like the way the laws and the rules work here with the clone stamp tool is as long as you avoid repeated patterns that are close to one another, you can usually pretty well fool the, the viewer into believing uh, that, that this is not faked, okay? So let's press Alt or Option and click over here. Maybe grab a little bit of this over here, some of the bigger dirt down below. Bigger dirt on the bottom, smaller dirt on the top. So we'll grab from over here and then just kind of fill this in a little bit. And then I'll do that again, maybe grab, I like the, how that has like a little bit of a piece of crop there. That looks good, okay? So now I'll zoom in here, Let's see what we have. See, we have a nice line right here of where grass meets dirt. We can go ahead and, and copy some of that over to here as well. So again, I'll get my clone stamp tool. I'll press Alt or Option, click over here, and just make little selections of that line where the dirt meets the grass, and then just go over. And then if I start to repeat patterns, I, I'll, I'll want to fix that, okay? So when I say a repeated pattern, I mean, like when we look here and we see that this grass right here is the same as this grass right here. We want to change that. So I'll press uh, again, go to my clone stamp tool here, press alt or option, and just maybe just cover up that one little blade of grass there. And that looks pretty good. That's good enough to fool the viewer. One other area that we might want to fix this up is probably in the clouds up here. So what I'll want to do is just press alt or option and find other parts of cloud patterns that I can put in here that are going to fool the viewer into believing that those clouds weren't recreated by Photoshop. There we go. That looks pretty good. Okay. And then maybe grab from here and just give a little bit of detail in those clouds there. And look at that. Uh, one thing we might also want to fix is Alt or Option, click here and fix these clouds, how they have like a nice little line of cloud there. Again, we just want to make sure that we're passing on the exact same thing that we see from one image to the next. All right, so let's take a look at that. That is all the stuff that we had to clean up. No big deal. It was pretty quick, pretty easy, right? Pretty simple. If I look right here, we can probably clean that up just a little bit more there too. And boom, that looks good. Okay, so here is our before. Okay, this is what we had before. Now, compositionally, again, I don't like the fact that there's so much weight on the right-hand side that points to pretty much nowhere. And then this portion of the road is cut off, right? So if I look at that, look at that. We just moved everything over and we did it artificially. And quite frankly, we saved this composition. So just to do a little recap and refresh, it's pretty simple. We're going to move the whole document over. I did that based on the rule of thirds using the crop tool and the rulers to kind of use as a gauge, but you don't necessarily have to do that if you don't want to. What, the main point is to just make sure you're not working on a flattened or background layer. Take the lock off of there, move the image over, take a marquee tool and select the outside area that you want to be filled in. Press shift F5 or edit fill and use content aware. After Photoshop does its magic and its little voodoo that it does to fill in all that stuff, all you got to do is use some of the data that you find in the composition to fill in the uh, random patterns of stuff that didn't quite match. For this, it was just basically the dirt and maybe a little bit of the clouds. So there's some people that might be like, oh, that's cheating. You can't do that. Well, why? <laughs> if I would have moved over when I was there to begin with, I would have gotten the same exposure, right? I guess if you uh, admit that you did it, I guess that's okay. But to me, it's art is art and an image is an image. If I'm going to fix a photograph because something is just a little bit off, I don't mind using some of the cheater tools that we find in Photoshop. Call it cheating, call it trying, call it whatever you want. I call it art, all right? So again, my name is Blake Rudis with F64 Academy and F64 Elite. If you like this, please comment on it, share a friend, give it a little thumbs up, and tell me if it's ever rescued one of your photographs because I'd love to hear your stories with the Content Aware Fill Tool. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch this. I sincerely appreciate it.